let's face it. Let's talk about your brain health. The number one organ that is not usually addressed in hundreds of cases that our doctors have seen in this office is brain function and brain function assessment. Folks, your brain controls all your body functions and movements and organs. Majority of the time, it has something to do with your chronic condition or what you're experiencing, and it's not addressed. The reason it's not addressed yet is because your doctor does not know how to address it without drugs. If your brain does not command your thyroid gland to produce thyroid-stimulating hormone, no matter how many medications you take for the rest of your life, it will not fix your thyroid gland. That is the number one reason you have to take medication for the rest of your life, because nobody addresses your brain function. The problem is that our doctors today are not trained in nutrition. Reason is there is no money for pharmaceutical companies to train doctors on nutrition. Doctors who don't believe taking supplements, they're simply not trained, and I don't blame them. But the problem arises when a patient starts learning about health and reversing their chronic condition naturally, they become skeptical when natural methods is told to them because they think if what we say it was good or effective, their medical doctor would have known about it or it would have been on television, or it, has, it was taught in medical school, and since it is not taught in medical school, or it's not on television, or they have not heard about it from their medical doctor, therefore it's invalid and it will not work. Even when they ask their doctor, the doctor says, I don't know. That's a bunch of baloney. Don't listen to those other doctors. And this is the problem. If you go to a regular doctor complaining of brain fog, cloudy thinking, chances are you get a shrug. I don't know. Because brain fog and many other functional chronic problems, they are not recognized as a medical condition. They don't have a code as a diagnosis and no pharmaceutical drugs or surgeries can correct brain fog. And what is idiotic is people are told they have brain fog, memory loss, anxiety, sleepless nights, and it's normal part of aging. Even if you're in your 30s, I hear doctors say that to patients. Folks, brain fog is not normal. It's a bad sign. It's the first sign of dementia or Alzheimer. I'm not saying you're going to get dementia or Alzheimer tomorrow. It is the first step. Then the story goes on. The patient goes to multiple doctors for their chronic condition. They go to a thyroid doctor, diabetes doctor, gut doctor. They go to a shrink because none of those doctors, they care about the whole body. They care about what they specialize at. These doctors try to fix or manage one organ. They fail to cure because there is no cure. Then the patient ends up seeing a shrink and gets more medication. Then the patient is fed up and ends up in our office because they watch a video like this. You need to get educated and not medicated. It is okay to feel stressed, to have anxiety or be angry. But it's not okay to chronically be stressed, chronically have anxiety, chronically every night you can't sleep, being chronically fatigued. That's not okay. Don't get me wrong. This video is not about doctors or it's not anti-doctor. It's not anti-medication. I have a lot of respect for doctors. We all need them. We all need medications. We all need doctors. Doctors do a great job when it comes to acute conditions, fractures, 
heart attack, stroke. But when it comes to chronic conditions, they drop the ball. They just manage the symptoms with a lifelong of drugs and medication, simply because they are not trained, and I don't blame them. We need to get the brain functioning first, then the other systems of the body. Because the brain controls your movement, controls your hormone production, controls your emotions, controls your energy, pain, perception of pain, testosterone, all female hormones. It's all controlled by your brain. And we need to fix the brain first. My message to doctors is, if you don't address the brain, you will miss a lot of stuff. Your brain needs adequate amount of multiple things to survive and work properly. Your brain needs three things to function adequately. One is oxygen. I have talked about this before. I'm not going to repeat everything. We have talked about it in our brain-based therapy videos. Just because you breathe, it doesn't mean your brain gets enough oxygen from your breathing. Many of our patients receive oxygen treatment and oxygen therapy prescribed by our medical physicians in our office. And as a result, they start sleeping better the same night. Number two, glucose. One of the most essential things a person can do for their health is to regulate their blood sugar. Your blood sugar has to be, number one, not too high, because that causes problems, obviously, but your blood sugar has to be stabilized. It has to be balanced. It is not uncommon for people with blood sugar disorders to be put on psychiatric medications, sleep medication, seizure medications, if you do not stabilize your blood glucose levels, you compromise fuel to the brain. Your brain needs steady, constant fuel. If you don't give your brain steady, constantly fuel, you will have symptoms of memory loss, fatigue, or insomnia. What is the medical model to fix it? Give you pills for memory loss. Give you pills for depression. Give you pills for lack of sleep. Your brain needs, the third thing that's really important, your brain needs adequate amount of stimulation. This is the most understood and misused area. Your brain needs proper stimulation in order for it to produce proper waves in our brain and it needs to command the body with the proper waves that is being formed in the brain. Proper hormone production and everything else. When your brain degenerates, you don't typically realize it. Because most people think forgetting things is normal part of aging. or when you doze off every time you read, or when you're no longer finding pleasure in the relationships or in the emotional bonds that you had with other things, you feel that's normal part of aging. It is not normal part of aging. These are all signs of brain cells dying and degenerating. Many people think if they do not, or been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, Parkinson, their brain is functioning good. That is not true. That is a sickness model and sickness care. In fact, the three most common symptoms of brain going towards degeneration is fatigue, depression, GI problems. And most people relate that to normal aging. Memory loss and cloudy thinking is a sign of your brain health is under attack. It is your brain's way of telling you that all is not well. It means your brain is being attacked by inflammation, 
many neurons are going to die too quickly. And this plays a role in being fatigued, being depressed, having bad mood, have anxiety. Healthy stimulations of neurons is extremely important and depends on multiple things. So this point number three is very important. We need to stimulate the brain. And all it doesn't happen in the brain. Neurotransmitters play a huge role in this. Examples of neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, in charge of your memory. Serotonin, in charge of your sleep. GABA, in charge of being calm and it's anti-anxiety. If you don't have enough GABA, you're not going to be calm and you're going to have anxiety. We have the above in the natural forms in our office. This will aid your overall wellness. You need to understand supporting neurotransmitter activity is not dependent on your body size. It's dependent on the degree of your symptoms. It typically takes a half hour to an hour after taking acetylcholine or GABA in a natural form to notice its effect naturally. When and if you get enrolled into our program, our physicians order appropriate, non-invasive, drug-free, painless, on-site testing to assess your brain health and brain function. It's 100% computerized with zero side effects. If they feel you can benefit from natural supplements and natural treatment and natural neurological exercises supervised on-site, then they will prescribe it for you as part of your care. And many times you will feel better naturally without drugs within a matter of a couple of sessions. I mean, how much value it has if you have good, well-rested sleep every night. You need to understand how your autonomic nervous system works. Your autonomic nervous system is divided into two categories, sympathetic or parasympathetic. Sympathetic is more simply known as fight or flight system of the body. Parasympathetic is known as rest and digest. Now, there is a reason I tell you this. When a baby is born, the parasympathetic system hasn't yet developed. So they have sympathetic dominance. That is why babies cannot digest well. They have high heart rates. Their pupils are huge. These are all signs of sympathetic dominance. As they become adults, the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in where you can digest better in your teenage years. But then when you mess up your system with American diet, being exposed to toxins, keep giving yourself the foods that you have intolerance with that you don't know about, and as you get older, the brain starts to degenerate and starts reverting to the sympathetic dominance as when you were a newborn. So that is why you develop constipation, inability to digest food. Then you may lose the sense of smell, sense of taste. Then you may feel you get allergies, nasal passages, they dry out because there's not enough mucus. When there is a sympathetic dominance, you start having chronic pain, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic urinary tract infections, fibromyalgia, migraines, adrenal gland malfunction, too much cortisol production. Cortisol is a stress-producing uh, uh, hormone. Memory and brain fog issues could be caused by inflammation. Inflammation in your body can cause brain inflammation, which causes brain fog, cloudy thinking, memory loss, on and on and on. Whenever you have inflammation from chronic pain, whenever you have inflammation, you can have from uh, food intolerances, food sensitivities, 
unmanaged autoimmune thyroid problem, unmanaged autoimmune problem, period. All of that will aid you to have brain fog and inflamed brain. Memory and brain fog issue could be caused by gut problems because gut problems feeds your brain problems. If you have issues with digestion, constipation, bloating, gas, this could be the hidden cause behind your brain fog which needs to be addressed. Brain fog may stem from poor circulation and insufficient oxygen. If you have cold nose, cold fingers, cold toes, you need to look into that. Memory and brain fog could be caused by hypothyroidism, as I said before, autoimmune Hashimoto's thyroiditis disease. There is multiple factors and conditions that could cause brain fog. It could be caused by an autoimmune attack where your immune system gets attacked, it cannot handle the attack, as a result it attacks your organs or systems of the body, one could be your brain. So brain autoimmunity is more common than people realize. If the immune system is attacking and destroying your brain cells, brain fog, cloudy thinking, sleep and memory issues could occur, very common. Brain fog could be caused by head injuries. I see it plenty of times with young high school or college athletes. And they're labeled as attention deficit disorder. Meanwhile, they play football and they have cloudy thinking. And it will haunt them for the rest of their life. So now you don't have to be chronically ill to have brain degeneration. Many times, a there is no obvious cause why you have brain fog or cloudy thinking. It is silent. We already talked about food and environmental sensitivity that can suppress your parasympathetic system, the rest and relax system. And it will lead to insomnia, high blood pressure, chronic digestive issues. If you reintroducing the foods that you don't know you're sensitive to, but you are sensitive to, to your body, you're going to have chronic digestive issues. No matter how much antiacids you take, you're not going to get fixed. No matter how much probiotics you take, you're not going to get fixed. It has to be handled in an orderly, sequential manner based on diagnostic testings that are performed so you can function better. Now the next point is, in a healthy brain, as neurons become stimulated, they create more branches into each other and make these super highways to work more efficiently. This is called neuroplasticity. This neuroplasticity happens when you have damaged brain cells. The brain cells next to it, it will take over its job. This is what we want. When they do stroke rehabilitation, this is an example. They want neuroplasticity. When there is a multiple sclerosis with the walking difficulty, they want neuroplasticity. Now, functionally, we want neuroplasticity also because the best time to treat dementia or Alzheimer is before you get dementia and Alzheimer. How? By keeping your activities and brain cells stimulated. In order for your brain to build these super highways, you need oxygen as we talked about, you need glucose, you need proper food intake, avoid foods that your body is sensitive or reactive to. One common one is gluten. We talked about that in our other videos. Stop sugar and stop sugar fluctuations. You need to balance your sugar levels. We will teach you how to do that. And I said proper constant stimulation of your brain neurons. It is not just about the number of neurons that you have, it is about how well they communicate your brain neurons to each other.
in order for our brain to stop degenerating or stopping degeneration, we need to reactivate your brain neurons naturally. Did you hear it? Naturally, not with Red Bull. We need to start making these super highways that I talked about. In order to make these highways, you need to properly do a brain assessment called a QEEG from a doctor who understands functional neurology, who understands functional medicine. Otherwise, if you don't use these neurons, you're going to lose these neurons because they're going to die. It is called negative plasticity. This is very common among children who play video games all day, constantly they're on the computer, they never exercise. Playing video games causes you to respond quickly to attacks because you see multiple colors on the screen. Hearing multiple frequency sounds from the right speaker on the headphone, left speaker from the headphone at the same time. This increases negative development of your limbic system. Your limbic system is a pain defense system. So as a result, the child is not running around outside reading or playing their favorite sport physically, not on the computer. Playing their sport outside like normal kids would do. Therefore, the kid's frontal lobe of their brain, which is an area of the brain that governs reasoning and thinking and controls decision making, it gets underdeveloped. And the neglect of development of the frontal lobe, it causes inability, impulsivity, and <clears throat> they cannot control their behavior. They get angry very fast. They yell and scream. So parents can take the video games away and encourage, sometimes force, their kids to learn, to read, to exercise, to socialize, stop texting as much as possible, so start socializing with other kids, which will develop the frontal lobe. In essence, it develops the relationship bonding neurons by constantly stimulating these brain superhighways that I talked about. As the child or adult patient's brain regains these neurons, positive plasticity happens. What does that mean? That means the child or adult, they totally become a new person. Other people will compliment you on your children or your spouse. We combine these natural methods with functional specific exercises that are performed in our office with supervised dietary regimen, neurological exercises, supplements, and diagnostics supervised by our physicians to help you. This happens all the time. And remember, your brain function is not directly related to your age. Your brain's age is totally different than your age. Your brain's age many times is older than your true age. And that is sad. As I said before, your brain's age relates to how much oxygen you're taking, not how much oxygen you breathe. Because as you get older, your ability to utilize oxygen for your brain diminishes. Next is glucose and, as I said, stimulation. If one of them is missing, which in most kids is stimulation, and in adults is all three, you're labeled as having adult onset attention deficit disorder. As a child, you're labeled as attention deficit disorder or autism spectrum disorder. Then your child's school receives special funding to have your child in that school, which many parents don't even know about it. So we need to do sensory, motor, core exercises to accomplish our goal with stimulation of neurons. We need to do eye exercises. We need to do rhythmic eye diagonal exercises to stimulate these neurons. 
So you need to go to a doctor who understands functional medicine, who understands functional endocrinology, who understands functional neurology. Based on the test results, what proper testing to order? Based on the test uh, order that comes in, what supplements the patients need to take? How much they need to take? How often they need to take? That is why many doctors don't practice functional medicine. You may need neurofeedback exercises, oxygen treatment, and supplements geared towards feeling better. We do it all in our office under the direction of our physicians. Next point we're going to talk about is brain activity. As I talked before, since we mentioned about neurofeedback, neurofeedback is a therapeutic regimen that normalizes or balances brain activity. Because brain overactivity is no good, underactivity is no good. Contrary to public's perception, most people have brain overactivity, which causes them to be cloudy thinking, have brain fog, have fibromyalgia and pain all over their body. Brain activity or underactivity is commonly overlooked. If you experience memory loss, brain fog, depression, anxiety, fatigue, is sleepless nights, you most likely have overactive midbrain. And you need to slow that midbrain down. How do we do that? We do neurofeedback therapy, which is a computerized therapy that regulates brain activity without side effects, without drugs, without medication. Sorry, I'm getting a little tongue-tied over here. It's Wednesday evening over here now. I was seeing patients in the morning. But also brain is the most oxygen-dependent organ of the body. And chronic symptoms affects its functionality. Therefore, testing and therapies have to be done to provide increased attention, focus, and memory. Natural supplements play a huge role in helping you. The purpose of supplements is to improve your physiological function of your body, which will take time. It's not going to happen overnight. Folks, you need to stop listening to unqualified people. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody read a book. Everybody has a friend. Everybody has Google. We want to decrease your brain fog, decrease your brain degeneration, and increase neuroplasticity, which will activate your brain neurons to have a healthy brain. Can it be done? Yes. Can we guarantee it? No. Are we successful? Yes. Very successful. Most people ignore signs and symptoms and blame it on aging. This is ridiculous. New study shows you can regenerate brain cells at any age. With specific brain exercises, you will challenge your brain, which we're going to teach you. So for example, if we detect loss of memory or brain fog, you will be asked to walk in straight line, looking forward, and count from 50 down by 3. 50, 47, 44, 41, 38. So you can remap these brain pathways and we get great results by just doing one exercise plus the oxygen treatment plus the supplements and this works for adults and kids. If you're experiencing headaches, attention deficit disorder, poor concentration, cloudy thinking, learning difficulty, memory loss, dyslexia, sleep disorder, fix your brain first. We are incredibly sick as a culture because we have a sickness care system. We don't have a health care system. Many people die in this country not because of the disease, because of the drug that is given for the disease, because of Adderall, because of Zoloft, because of antibiotics, because of Xanax. You may need these drugs in severe stages, but not all the time. It is definitely being overutilized and overused. What do you think you're going to feel in a year from now? 
What do you think you're going to feel five years from now taking these pills and medication and the way you have been treating yourself? If the way you feel now by what you're doing, it was helping you, you would have been fixed by now. What do you think you're going to feel 10 years from now? So if there's a way to take care of it naturally with a doctor who understands, with physicians who practice functional medicine, if it makes sense, do it. If it doesn't make sense, don't do it. Vioxx killed more people than Vietnam War. If you don't believe me, Google it. Good health makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make dollars for the pharmaceutical companies. Psychiatric medications that are on the rise. There are more people on these drugs than ever. Kids! It's all because of statin drugs. The parents who are taking statin medication, the moms who are hormonally imbalanced, Fat-free diet? Fat-free diet is horrible. Not having organic food, not having DHA, living on diet soda. These medications overstimulate the brain in an attempt to make it to work better for the day. It doesn't do anything for development of these superhighways and remapping the brain that we're talking about. Folks, you need to avoid certain food because they have been shown to trigger inflammation and stress in many people, which will exacerbate your symptoms, your autoimmune condition. Inflammation, it causes poor brain health. We give you a booklet as a patient of this office, the foods that you should eat, the foods that you should avoid. Because certain food you should avoid. Diet soda you should avoid. Certain food cause memory loss, brain fog, forgetfulness. We will test you on which foods you should avoid, which foods you can continue having. Just because you eat healthy, that doesn't mean it gets digested in your body and your body likes it. We have had numerous patients with bad gut function and were on multiple gut medications, but they still had a bad gut because they were constipated, because they had a parasite. You need, and what we did for these patients, we fixed their brain and their gut symptoms got better. Why? Because poor brain function can impact your gut function. Poor gut function can also cause poor brain function. We have talked about that in other videos. Poor gut function can cause poor brain function because the vagus nerve that's in the brain coming down goes to your gut, handles communication between the brain and the gut. Therefore, if you're on gut medication and are still having gut issues, you may want to find out if you have a vagus nerve problem that keeps getting stimulated and causes the brain malfunction. As a result, you have gut malfunction. Does it happen? Yes. Most of our patients who have gut issues, they have brain issues as well. Often patients ask us, do I have to take these supplements that you gave me every day? And the answer is yes. As long as you want to feel good, you take these supplements every day. Our physicians prescribe natural hormones for men and women. Do they need to take the natural hormones, natural bioidentical hormones every day? Yes, our physicians prescribe it to them. As long as they want to feel good, the patients, they will continue using them. Next point is diet. Listen to what I'm about to say. You need to eat for energy. Healthy food, as I said, it does not mean it's healthy for you. The only way to find if you have food or environmental sensitivity is to get tested. There are a lot of junk supplements that can actually worsen your symptoms. Our medical panel will order 
diagnostic testing for you that is painless and non-invasive and is done on site to see and to scan your body for toxins, for heavy metals, for chemicals, for food and metabolic stressors and try to fix them and then you need to avoid them for rest of your life some of this stuff. If your body doesn't digest the protein in milk casein and it comes up in the testing that we do that you have highly sensitivity to it, you need to avoid milk. What do you want me to tell you? But the good news is when you avoid it for a couple of weeks, you start feeling better. And in fact, when you reintroduce it to your diet, then you get all those bad symptoms back. Then you say, wow, I guess I'm really allergic and have intolerance to casein. You need to understand a well-functioning body has the ability to detoxify. But when you don't have a well-functioning body, you cannot detoxify. You should not expose yourself to toxins and chemicals and preservatives that you cannot detoxify. That is why some people can have gluten, some people cannot have gluten. When a baby is born, the baby's immune system is not even developed to be able to detoxify. And I have no idea why the kids get multiple vaccinations within several days or months that they're in this world. I'm not anti-vaccine. All I'm saying is there is a lot of heavy metals in the vaccines that causes food sensitivities and food allergies and weakened immune system that causes seasonal allergies later on that causes chronic illnesses later on which is on the rise. I'm just educating you. Most of our patients they have been to more than five doctors for their chronic symptoms. They have been to a gastroenterologist, they have been to an endocrinologist, they have been to a primary care physician. Some of them have had surgeries. Some of them, their thyroid was not working, they removed it. Their gallbladder was not working, they removed it. Well, they waited too long. They have to be removed. Many patients have had blood testing, which has caused more confusion by indicating false positives and indicating false negative numbers. False positive is when, for example, your thyroid markers are off and the cause maybe the liver is not functioning properly to convert the T4 inactive to T3 active form. The doctor will instantly put you on a thyroid meds and gives you T4 and does not address the cause, which is your liver. False negative is the opposite, is when you have a functional problem that does not show accurately in a simple blood test because the normal ranges are too broad and functional ranges are too narrow. Normal range for testosterone is from 400 to 1100. Some labs, uh, they have 300 to 1100, normal. So somebody is 400 versus somebody is a thousand, they're both in the normal range. There's a huge difference. This is crazy. The problem is that you have to be 80% sick to show positive on blood tests because we have a sickness care system. And many times your numbers will get related to another organ or system of the body which has nothing to do with why you're sick. Most chronic functional problems such as low energy, sleep problems, memory loss, cloudy thinking, depression, anxiety, brain fog, low sex drives, digestive issues involve malfunction of multiple organs. When you have hormonal problems, we need to fix your gut, we need to fix your liver, we need to fix your brain, we need to fix your hormones. And we need to address them all at the same time in a sequential manner. If your blood sugar is out of whack, it is a problem. If you're like most people, you eat a diet that has high blood sugar soaring, then low blood sugar 
and fluctuate and crashing sometimes during the day, it's no good. You'll have a problem, not only with blood sugar, but with brain function and a sleep problem and being fatigued. Folks, stay away from sugar and alcohol. Alcohol feeds sugar. Sugar feeds cancer. Cancer cells love sugar. Alcohol is a no-no. Cancer cells have over 90 receptor sites that they love to have sugar coming. Therefore, if you have super carb diet, if you have a lot of sugar in your diet, you are feeding cancer cells to replicate. It is a shame even oncologists are not trained in nutrition. And in most cases, fancy hospitals still provide cookies and dessert after each session of chemotherapy. This is a big wow. And they all know about it, but they still give uh, cookies, they still give dessert after meals. I don't want to go off tangent, but this time I will go. In Germany, they did a study of 100 people with cancer in their 70s. 50 received chemotherapy, 50 did not receive chemotherapy, and they were all in their 70s. The 50 who received chemotherapy in average died 11 months earlier than the 50 who did not get chemotherapy. So if you want cancer, you get chemotherapy. Again, that's just my opinion, and I'm just educating you. I'm not telling you what to do. There are a lot of factors which are not considered commonly that causes people take unnecessary drugs for their entire life. Because we have a pharmaceutical-driven medical system who teaches our doctors.